uh, one thing I'm hearing folks doing right now, and I think it's a phenomenal idea, recording a video talking about where were we at at the beginning of the year, where are we at right now, and where are we going just in the interest rate um, uh, conversation, meaning... <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode we do bi-monthly with David Childers from Keeping Current Matters, where we talk about, well, basically the world, the, the national economy of real estate uh, mm -hmm. and what's going on in the economy, what's going on in the housing and mortgage world and how it impacts you. David, welcome back for another awesome chat. Johnny, I'm glad to be back and uh, always enjoy these Friday afternoon chats that we get to have. I know folks join uh, here on Zoom and on Facebook Live and, and the Lab Coat uh, Agents Group. So always enjoy the conversations that we have. And, you know, our goal at Keeping Current Matters is that anybody watching and anybody that uses this information would be the most educated agent in their market on these topics. Um, anything from, you know, maybe we'll talk today about interest rates, seeing some interesting things there to prices, to appreciation, all the things we've talked about, Johnny, over the last year. So glad to be here. And uh, glad to be back uh, on a Friday afternoon talking. Yeah, can, you know, your intro was great where you said, you know, to be, in, you know, the most educated agent or yeah. the agent in your area. And I'm going to tell a quick story about, we're going to just take one minute if we, if we can. So I, ha I have a monthly meeting with all my partners and in that we always ask for wins, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And one person I actually called on him, I said, hey, we did a video for you tell everybody you were the listing agent prior a buyer's agent brought the buyer to that home the transaction closed several years later they specifically reached out to you why and he said well because they thought they saw us all over social media they saw us active doing videos mm -hmm. and everything else like that next point my time and um you know plus they got a, a local page they've lived there for 50 years right and um no, they know everybody, but they said, because we are active on social media mm -hmm. and we see you everywhere. So that's the importance of doing that kind of stuff. Incorporate, and we're going to talk about it again later, incorporate this information that David's talking about into your weekly, monthly rhythms and you can, daily, weekly or monthly rhythms, whatever they are, and you can position yourself to be more knowledgeable than the competition in this day and age. We need every edge that we can get to get those listings. Anyway, sorry yeah, to, to absolutely agree. no. I think you're I think you're absolutely right, Johnny. I, I always enjoy your perspective on uh, not only the market, but hey, here's a video that you can go out and record on one of these topics because you're right. When when you are out there, when you're consistently doing that, you're seen as the educator. You're seen as um, the one that knows what they're talking about. So I think it's it's uh, really really important. Yeah, one of the biggest one of the biggest uh, obstacles that we and cover or what well, discover during our calls is people don't have content. They don't know what yeah. to write, right? They're, yeah, yeah. It's over here. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think I think you're right there. And so the way I like to start off these calls, you know, when we're talking, Johnny, is what are we hearing out in the in the world? What are agents asking? And I um, mean, you know, I see we have folks here on Zoom. I know we have folks live on, on Facebook and you know, maybe drop your questions in there. Or what are you hearing? What questions are coming up uh, from folks? I'll tell you one that I've gotten several times is uh, you, you almost you can't do this next, you know, half an hour, 25 minutes, whatever we have left without acknowledging the conflict in Ukraine, Russian invasion there. And, um, and certainly pray that that would end quickly if that's if that's possible you know for the for the human toll there but johnny a lot of questions that i'm getting about uh, how, how is all that potentially going to um affect the housing market you know i, I talked to a uh, kcm member uh, late last week about uh you know a seller they were working with he said i'm concerned that this is going to cause you know disruption in the housing market we're not going to get as much for a home as we thought we were going to get. So a lot of questions uh, we've gotten about uh, about that. I covered it actually earlier this week on a, on a KCM uh, live, but I, I, I did want to talk about that for just a minute and I'll hop into kind of our topic here. You know, certainly we're seeing disruption uh, or seeing losses in the stock market uh, based on uncertainty and things like that. And that's not the housing market, but certainly the, the 
you know, amount of money that people have in the stock market uh, bodes, you know, sort of to how wealthy people feel and, you know, them going out and buying homes and, uh, and that. And, and, you know, I always try to remind people, let's forget about, um, you know, sort of the rich people idea of the stock market. Every, you know, first responder, every teacher, every factory worker that has a, a 401k or retirement plan likely has, you know, uh, assets and, and investments in the stock market, you know. Uh, probably a sizable portion of their uh, net worth invested in the stock market based on that retirement plan. Uh, Where's the other portion of their network, uh, net, net worth uh, locked up? And that's in their home, right? And that's the area we can help people. We can be the educator on what's happening here. And so uh, one thing I wanted to, to, to bring to you, probably the biggest impact so far uh, in this is um, in interest rates. And so I'll share this real quick, uh, the a couple of slides on interest rates to give you all that information. I was going uh, to ask a, you about this because they kind of did a little seesaw ride. Over yeah, there. yeah, we'll talk about that. But according to, to Freddie Mac, as of yesterday, 3.76, the average um, uh, 30 year fixed in this country right now. They say geopolitical uh, tensions caused the US Treasury yield to recede this week as investors move from the safety of bonds. You'll always hear that term, the flight to safety. That's moving money from the stock market and the bond market, uh, leading to a drop in mortgage rates. While inflationary pressure remains, the cascading impact of the war in Ukraine have created market uncertainty. Consequently, rates are expected to stay low in the short term, but will likely increase in the coming months. So, you know, we certainly, again, like I stated on the front end, uh, we want to see that uh, end quickly for just the human element, people that are involved. And our hearts go out to those over there, maybe people that are here in this country that have uh, relatives, family members, loved ones that are involved in any capacity um, in this conflict. But, you know, when we see this happen, traditionally, this flight to safety gives us a little bit of relief. Uh, on a, on the mortgage rate, uh, average mortgage rate in this country, and we're seeing exactly that. You know, if you looked at this graphically, this is what it looks like going back to January of 2020. I always say, you know, uh, pandemic comes on and and the Fed influences rates lower. Then we've started to come out of this and uh, peaking right. Uh, you know, here if you look at this graphic here, right above, uh, right at four percent, now down at three uh, three and three quarter percent. In the 30 year fix, to put that into perspective, the beginning of the year we were 3.1% in the average 30 year fix, now 3.76. What this likely did, Johnny, uh, this, and I do believe this is a short term sort of reprieve in rates, is it stopped the climb in rates. You know, it stopped this, you know, it started to escalate. And I'm not saying that they would continue to escalate at the pace they were um, in uh, the first couple of months of this year, but slowed that down and we even saw some relief in the average 30 year fixed. But, but if we look at this, I wanna kind of unpack it. And Johnny, I wanna pause after this because I think there's an opportunity to record a video to get some of this uh, information out. But uh, Ken Johnson from Florida Atlantic University really like his, uh, his perspective. He said, international uncertainty brought about uh, by the conflict in Ukraine is outweighing a hawkish Fed's fight against inflation. Current flight to safety from equity to fixed income markets is driving up the demand for the 10-year Treasury notes, pushing yields down. I'll talk about that in just a minute. In turn, this will put downward pressure on mortgage rates, which we've seen. Put bluntly, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is driving down mortgage rates. So um, I think Ken's absolutely right there. You know, We've talked a lot, Johnny, about the 10-year Treasury and watching that uh, relative to mortgage rates, and, and he sort of, uh, you know, breaks that down, the uh, byproduct of this conflict and this uncertainty is uh, the yield and the 10-year uh, lowering, which is lowering rates. And you see this right as of this morning, the KCM research team um, just put this together. We're starting to see this, you know, drop down and a little bit uncertain, the 10-year treasury. Why is this important? Well, if you've been following Johnny and I in these Friday afternoon chats, you know that all, you know, for the past 50 years, the 30-year mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year treasury rate. So let's go back. What do we see? We see the 10-year treasury rate dropping, and we're seeing some relief there uh, in mortgage rates. I'll say this, a uh, slight retreat in interest rates saw an advance in housing market activity as buyers sought to find the right home. So I think there is the opportunity to, uh, to 
uh, you know, help folks uh, maybe with a lower interest rate in the short term window. But but bottom line is mortgage rates fell as investors sought safety. Again, that word buying mortgage bonds, but the decline in rates is temporary. This is not something that's going to hang around uh, and fully uh, expect when the Fed acts to help curb inflation, um, you know, with the Fed funds rate raising, uh, is what what everybody is is certainly predicting uh, later this month uh, that we're going to see that uh, uh, interest rate continue to rise. So, so short term uh, opportunity there for those that are that are looking to buy right now, Johnny. Right, and so I just want to reemphasize what you just went over, specifically drill down to one point: the ten year T bond. This is what you want to follow. You often will hear interest rates are rising or raising. This is happening. That's happening. Some of these things that are raising don't have anything to do with the mortgage rate typically, right. but it's that 10 year T bond. So if you want some content that you can talk about, you can make a five part series about that entire concept, maybe dig a little bit deeper, but I'm sure if David's talking about it, it's on their website. If there's a graph about it, there's a blog about it, and you can go get this stuff and be educated. You don't even have to come up with anything new. All you have to do is basically reiterate the words that are already written, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And talk, talk about why this is what we want to follow and not that, right? Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, Johnny, you do a good job of taking some of these graphics and making the video with it as a background. And one thing I'm hearing folks doing right now, and I think it's a phenomenal idea, recording a video talking about where were we at at the beginning of the year, where are we at right now, and where are we going, just in the interest rate um, uh, conversation, meaning at 3.1% on a 30-year fixed, what was the payment on the average loan amount in your market? At three and three quarters, what's the payment on the average loan amount? Maybe you pick four and a half. That's you know, it gives you this progression to show people this is what's happening in the market right now. Um, to give them real numbers and tangible numbers to to make that's, sense of this. That's an in-pocket difference, right? That mm -hmm. difference is gonna you're gonna feel that in your pocket. So that I call it in-pocket difference. Show them what the in-pocket difference is. It might be better for them. It might yep. be worse for them, but they need to know how thin that pocket or how thick that pocket's going to be based upon your information that you're able to give to them. And again, and when you're able to position yourself as the most knowledgeable real estate agent, listen, the world is progressing faster. Two, three years ago, video wasn't as big as it is. It's big now, right? Yeah. This information, now it's blog. Now you can take the blog, you can turn it into multiple. You can even rewrite an article then drive them to your, to your site, right? Uh, what, whatever you want to do, because this information is there. You're able to keep them current matters. I think you guys actually put it on everybody's business page if they subscribe in that particular yeah. manner, or they can, right? Yeah, yeah. I can drive people, hey, read the full article on my page. There you go. Yeah, this, this and that's what it does. You market. share the blog and it drives them right back to wherever you know, you've got that pointed to your, your website or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Great information. What else is going on out there? And yeah, my all of our hearts go out to, to what's happening over there and, you know, Ukraine and everything else. It's horrible. And it is going to impact us one way or another, uh, yeah. whether it's uh, through inflation, whether it's through something, it's going to affect the economy and the economy affects everything else. But it's a complicated situation that we won't even try to discuss or, um, or try to figure out over there. That's for smart people's problems. Um, but for us, what else? I mean, is there any other talk around what's happening over there and how that might impact us around maybe inflation or anything or home prices? Yeah, we'll talk about prices here in just a minute. I think, you know, the, the inflation conversation uh, up until now has been this transitory conversation. I'll say what I hear economists saying is they think we're going to move through uh, inflation that we're close to to a peak there. But I think the other reality is, is, is even though it may peak, it, I don't think it's going to drop based on uh, what we're seeing, you know, conflict in the world looking like. And so I think you can expect that to be a reoccurring uh, thing happening forward. And, you know, certainly uh, at the heart of this conflict is the energy debate and, you know, the, the oil that we uh, purchase from Russia, and that just makes everything else, you know, is, is gas costs more and everything else costs more, you know, because that's to be transported. So I think you can, you, you should expect to hear that, but let's talk about our business and, and where, where do we feel inflation or, you know, uh, uh, that is in price growth. And I've got some interesting things here uh, on home prices that I want to share uh, that have just come out. And it's a, certainly, it's a little bit different than 
what we've uh, seen, Johnny, and what we've been talking about. And the bottom line is price appreciation in this country, according to CoreLogic, is definitely accelerating. So this is a look at the year-over-year -year price increase in homes. You know, we use numbers that are a U.S. average. Your, your market may be less more uh, than this. On year-over-year, -year, they measure it each month. So, so the month right now as compared to this is January of 2020. To this graphic compared to January 2021, uh, what was the average price growth in a home? And you see, you know, prices started growing at a quicker pace, um, you know, through the spring and into the summer of last year and sort of plateaued off. And we're seeing a little bit of a, a peak up uh, in price growth in January in this country. So there was this question, you know, Johnny, you and I talked a lot about it. You know, is this kind of peak and curve down? Is this peaked and plateaued out. We saw a, a little bump up in January uh, in price growth due to the extremely low uh, inventory across the country. So anybody waiting around saying, you know what, uh, I think prices are going to cool off here this month. Uh, they, they certainly aren't getting that uh, out in the market right now. And uh, if anything, we're seeing it, it pick up as of the latest uh, information here from CoreLogic. You know, yeah. if I go in uh, and look at this across the map, the national average 19.1%, like I mentioned, but this is a look depending on what uh, state you're in. Many, many states in the dark blue, over 20%, a lot in that 15 to 20%. You know, I always remind people the average price appreciation in this country, 3.8% uh, per going back uh, many, many years. And, and we've seen a lot more of that in the last couple of years and certainly seeing a lot of price appreciation right now uh, in homes. You know, if we look at forecasts, we're constantly monitoring that at Keeping Current Matters, what experts are saying about this year. Uh, the most recent uh, forecast for prices, the average about 6.1% of the seven forecasters that we follow anywhere from 3% to 9.6% there with CoreLogic. Um, a lot of appreciation. I think, I think we're gonna be, you know, higher than 6.1% personally. I think somewhere between eight and 10%. Uh, in home price appreciation this year, but a lot, lot more appreciation. I say this because there's this, this thought of maybe we'll, uh, we'll hang around and, and not buy right now because prices will cool off and maybe you know, come down this year. And, and I would use this to educate people. Reuters also um, surveyed uh, an analyst in the housing market and said, what do you think? This is interesting. What do you think about uh, the forecast for the 2022 U.S. housing market? In December, they said 8%. Well, jump up to February, they're now at 10.3%. What does that mean? You're seeing forecasters you know, start to look and say, we're not seeing the inventory we need, but certainly we believe there's going to be more inventory coming to market, but the low inventory is going to continue to drive prices up uh, across the country, Johnny. And it's just this this impact of, of, of low supply, demand coming into the market. And as interest rates rise, it certainly will moderate the market, but uh, don't see that slowing down to, or, or certainly nowhere near uh, depreciation right now in homes. And the interesting thing about what you just showed um, is that that swing from eight to 10.3, yeah, 30 some odd percent, right? Yeah. So while it, eight and 10 are close together and everything, it's 30%. Yeah. So it's important to understand because 30% of anything is a, a significant chunk. It's a damn third, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I think it also is reflective, Johnny, of people coming into this year going, you know, maybe in 2022, the housing market's going to cool down and, you know, jump to February and, and analysts going, maybe not, maybe, you know, maybe we're still going to see a rapid price appreciation of this year. Yeah. That's all good stuff right there. And, you know, a lot of some people, you know, the question I see posted at least once or twice a week is often, you know, is the market slowing down where you're at? And, you know, some people are saying, oh, it's a little slow. I can tell you the person that I opened this uh, dialogue up with in the beginning, they had 40 offers on that property in uh, central Pennsylvania. So it's not slowing down over there. Yeah. Um, so it depends on where you are. But prices are up. And I don't think we're going to see a slowdown. I don't think we're going to see a slowdown, uh, not not anytime soon, unless something significant happens. Yeah, it's certainly um, people. This is another question that comes up a lot. I'm sure everybody on the call here uh, gets that as well. There's nothing in the housing market that we can see or that experts are following that would suggest that. Do we have a crystal ball? And you could always talk about things external to the housing market 
Um, but when we look at it, uh, low, you know, rising prices are a factor of low supply and, and high demand. Yeah. And you know, it goes back to sixth grade economics, right? Supply and demand, right? The greater the, the greater the demand and the lower the supply, the higher the price is going to be. And flip that over, the lower the demand, Always. right? The, the less it's going to be. And that's what I always, always tell people, you know, we've talked about that on, on these Friday calls, is bring your local market information into this and say, where do you see supply at right now? Do you see supply growing? Do you see demand growing? Do you see demand squelching? You know, what, what are you seeing locally? That's going to be the determiner of prices uh, locally for you. So uh, well, certainly that, nationally, yeah. the forecast will continue to grow. Put that in the chat, either in Zoom or if you're on and watching it on Facebook. Put put what's going on in your market. You guys seeing an up market, down market, prices going up, prices going down. What are you seeing? What's going on with inventory? Yeah. Anyway, what else we got? We got some yeah. I would say put in there too. If there are any topics you want us to cover and calls, I'll try to get the research team to 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 take a look at that. Um, I'll finish with this, Johnny, or give you something here for a couple of minutes. A couple of interesting things on, uh, you know, the byproduct of rising prices, which is homeowner equity and uh, and wealth. Some good information coming out. Some great information for um, uh, for some videos. This comes from NAR. While the booming housing market contributed significantly to the recovery of the U.S. economy. Research has consistently shown that home ownership is also associated with multiple economic and social benefits to individual homeowners. Home ownership has always been an important way to build wealth. And we know that uh, we're in the business. We know the, the intangible aspects of home ownership or non-financial aspects of home ownership that are so important and the financial aspects. Uh, according to NAR, the net worth of a homeowner versus a renter in 2021 300,000 versus 8,000 uh, in renting. Significant, significant difference uh, in the net worth of these two. Certainly, we, we understand there are people that are renting that need to rent, but um, uh, those that can buy and want to buy, we want to see them be able to buy because it is a way to grow wealth. It is a way um, to secure you and your family's future for, for uh, you know, what's uh, to come and you know, all the things that we talk about that, that homeowners have the benefit of, the tax deduction, the refinance they can do, the cash out refinance to start a business, all the things we know, the great things about homeownership. Bottom line, though, Johnny, is that the net worth of a typical homeowner is about 40 times the net worth of a renter. Um, and I think we want to get that word out there as people see the effect. Everybody talks about rising prices. Maybe we don't talk as much about What's the effect of rising prices for homeowners all over the country? And that is uh, growing net worth due to home equity uh, in, uh, in their home. So I think, it's a, I think it's a message we need to get out there. Johnny, a, a great video uh, to put out into the market uh, to be the expert about what's happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, what? there's so much good content that you guys have and people have access to that it's all about isn't the human mind, right, is, is looking for quick content. They're looking for quick, our attention span is shrinking. It really is. Yeah. It, at the same time, TikTok's going to 10 minutes. But anyways, pe people want the best engaged videos on TikTok are the seven second videos followed by the 15 second videos, right, mm -hmm. for full watch time. So you, you can put out this um, an amazing video series on TikTok, which is easy to do, on Reels, right? You can do this with your content. It's very easy to do, and it, it it's never ending, right? Because you guys are always every day updating and innovating, right? Yeah. So it's a bunch of great stuff there, and it keeps you knowledgeable. It keeps you here's I call it. I'm going to tell you all about a little secret. I call it SOI hacking or sphere hacking. So 60 to 70% of your business is supposed to come from the people that you know, yeah. right? 60% buyer, 70% seller. So now all of a sudden, as your sphere grows, because people are seeing you more, sphere of influence doesn't necessarily need, need to mean the people. See, it's an old term and it meant the people that you knew, but it can also mean the parasocial relationships that you're building and social media and video allows for you to build that parasocial relationship. That's your sphere. So your sphere is going to grow. They don't want to follow a knucklehead right but if you're putting out good solid information like wow this guy knows what he's talking about or this gal knows what she's talking about they, they, you're gonna you're gonna build a following and yeah. then you don't even know it right because the real estate market out there is this big but the market that's gonna buy in the next five years is this big yeah and you're if you're not talking about that stuff then you're always constantly just looking for the now the here and nows 
then you're going to miss this whole big pie. So do some sphere hacking, man. I'll tell you what, I'll, maybe David and I should talk about doing a, a like a 30 day ch um, keeping current matters video challenge or something. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 We, we, we talk, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and here's what I would say. Anybody that wants these slides, that's watching and listening today. You can email me, David at keeping current matters. I'll send them to you, but use this information. Like Johnny said, I mean, we, we are on these calls every other Friday give you this information. Now there's, there's two keys that I always, I always say, you have to have the knowledge and then you have to take action with that knowledge. And Johnny, you've just given several different ideas. I know you are putting out content and showing people how to do it. And listen, I, I would be uh, taking action with this knowledge so that you can be the most educated agent and perceived as the most educated agent in your market on these topics. Absolutely. And so listen, man, I know that you're going to let everybody, you know, taste the gravy, smell the cooking and everything else like that. We call that a trial. You get to try it for free. So how do people get to try this and taste it and everything? Yeah, you can go over to try KCM, T-R-Y, KCM for keeping current matters.com. And you can do a free 14 day trial. You can go in there and check it out. See if it's right for you. See if you want to use uh, this, but we do it uh, starting at $29 a month. Uh, give you all this information. You can then write, uh, uh, you know, social media posts, we even give you social media posts, but uh, you can put all this great information out uh, to the market that you serve. Exactly. So you can look educated. Absolutely. Because right? you're working with people's biggest assets of their lives. You need to know what yeah. the market's doing. Is it going up? Is it going down? What are the economic factors? Because sellers are going to ask you these questions. Buyers are going to ask you these questions. Be most knowledgeable and say, you know, I actually wrote an article about that. It co-authored by Keeping Current Matters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely right make you make keeping current matters your research source anyways y'all try kcm.com that's it all right i had to second guess myself even though i know it <laughs> guys go to try kcm.com sign up for a 14 day free trial if after 14 days it ain't your thing cancel it no harm no foul but at least you get to taste the gravy david thank you see you thank in two you weeks. johnny as always you do such a great job and uh, setting these up and, uh, and and really giving ideas on how to go out and record videos. So uh, grateful for that. Listen, I just have to show up and make some jokes here and there. And <laughs> you're, hey, you're, the, you're the one bringing the knowledge, my friend. <laughs> well, it's always fun to do, enjoy these Friday afternoons. Uh, see you there, uh, uh, Simon. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you for everybody who always joins uh, these calls on uh, online and on uh, Zoom here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all. Because if it weren't for y'all, we wouldn't have anything to do. That's right. All right. Peace out, everybody. Be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.